The royal court today announced that upon an invitation from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness heir apparent Charles, Prince of Wales, and Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla Parker Bowles, will arrive in the Kingdom of Bahrain tomorrow to begin an official visit that will include discussions with His Majesty the King and senior officials regarding Bahraini-British relations. The royal court and the court of the Crown Prince warmly welcome their royal highnesses to the kingdom and expresses their sincere hopes for a successful and productive visit. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace today the Speaker of the National Assembly of Pakistan, Sardar Ayaz Sadiq, and his accompanying delegation on their visit to the kingdom under the official invitation of the Representatives Council. The Speaker of the National Assembly of Pakistan conveyed the greetings of Pakistan's President and Prime Minister and their wishes for further progress and prosperity to Bahrain and its people under the wise leadership of His Majesty King Hamad. His Majesty affirmed the strong bilateral relations which are based on cooperation and mutual respect and highlighted the strong historic and cultural ties between the two countries. His Majesty requested the Speaker of the National Assembly of Pakistan to convey greetings to Pakistan's President and Prime Minister and his wishes for further prosperity to the country, pointing out that these visits contribute to enhancing bilateral cooperation and exchange of expertise specifically in the legislative and parliamentary fields. He affirmed the important role of the Representatives Council in coordinating and uniting efforts and defending the Islamic nation's issues and parliamentary events. His Majesty expressed pride in the gains and achievements of the parliamentary march and their positive contributions to the benefit of the kingdom and its people. He also praised the parliamentary march of Pakistan and its various democratic achievements. His Majesty the King went on to hail the honorable stances of Pakistan towards Bahrain, which affirms the brotherly ties between the two countries. He praised the bilateral cooperation in defending Arab and Islamic issues, supporting brotherly ties among Islamic countries, and its efforts in enhancing security, peace, and stability on the regional and international levels. His Majesty also lauded the efforts of the Pakistani community and their role in supporting the march of progress in the kingdom. His Majesty then discussed recent developments on the regional and international levels. The Speaker of the National Assembly of Pakistan expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King and his role in strengthening bilateral relations, especially on the legislative and parliamentary levels, hailing His Majesty's wise leadership that has enabled the kingdom to fulfill its development goals. He also affirmed his country's keenness to enhance its cooperation with Bahrain in order to serve the interests of both countries and their people. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the National Audit Office, the NAO President Hassan bin Khalifa Al Jalahma, who presented His Majesty with the 13th NAO report for 2015 to 2016. The King praised the efforts of the President and employees of the NAO and noted their credibility and outstanding performance and the achievements made in the framework of maintaining public money. He also highlighted the office's regulatory achievements positively reflected in the level of reports issued. His Majesty affirmed the importance of maintaining public money, commending the role of the NAO in enhancing the performance level of the Kingdom's ministries and institutions to ensure the public interest. The NAO President expressed pride in presenting His Majesty with the report under Article 19 of the Court Law. He stated that the report was issued on the basis of the growing importance of the Office's role in the impl implementation of the Kingdom's policies of comprehensive reform careful management of public money, and rationalization of expenditure to develop the country's economy. The NAO is also responsible for contributing to raising the proficiency level of the government's bodies and enhancing its services, as well as developing the current financial and accounting systems. al Jalahma added that the office devoted all its efforts to develop and improve organizational work to support the legislative and executive authorities in monitoring the kingdom's revenues and spending its expenditure within budget. He also noted that the office continues to implement the policy of developing Bahraini caters 
through the Vocational Rehabilitation Program for Technical Staff, which allows employees to obtain accredited professional certifications in the field of auditing and accounting. At the end of his statement, Al Jalahima affirmed that the office's recent development stemmed from the unlimited support of His Majesty, adding that it has honored him to listen to His Majesty's directives regarding the notes and recommendations included in the annual report. His Majesty hailed the professionalism of the office's staff, which is reflected in its reports. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace today the new judge at the Court of Cassation, Abdul Munam Ibrahim Al Shahwi, where he took an oath on the occasion of his royal, rather his royal appointment. His Majesty the King congratulated the newly appointed judge, wishing him success in undertaking the responsibility of implementing the values of truth, justice, and the rule of law. His Majesty stressed his keenness in supporting the independence of the judiciary and providing it with qualified caters to preserve the rights, security, and stability of society. His Majesty the King also hailed the efforts exerted by members of the judiciary to achieve justice and the preservation of citizens' rights under the law. His Majesty also noted the continuous development of Bahrain's judiciary and its legislation due to its highly qualified judges. His Majesty the King stressed the development is the kingdom's goal, affirming that Bahrain's national march will continue to achieve the best interests for the kingdom and its people. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa is the Speaker of the Shura Council Ali bin Salih Al Salih and a number of members of the representative and Shura Councils as well as numerous officials. His Royal Highness stated that the leaders of the Gulf Cooperation Council countries have created effective programs and constructive plans to guarantee continued prosperity including services and standards of living. He affirmed that consultation and coordination should be the prominent features of any movement aimed at dealing with security and economic regional developments. The Prime Minister addressed a number of topics related to local issues with the members of the legislature, asserting that joint action between constitutional authorities succeeded in achieving the accomplishments that received global recognition and praises. His Royal Highness urged that Bahrain and its interests must be everyone's priority to achieve further development and to ward off danger and evil schemes. The Prime Minister stressed the government's keenness to enhance cooperation and partnership between the executive and legislative authorities in order to support the National Action March, noting the role of the legislator in supporting development programs in various fields.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the cabinet meeting at Odebia Palace. His Royal Highness urged to continue to organize and host events and hold conferences as well as forums and exhibitions that introduce investment opportunities in the Kingdom of Bahrain and support its position as a safe environment and a hub for investments that would strengthen Bahrain's economic and trade status on the regional and international levels. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister cited Invest in Bahrain Forum 2016 and the Gulf Turkish Forum, which were held under his patronage. He also directed to resolve the bachelor housing problem by considering the establishment of cities dedicated for workers in several regions of the country that are integrated with high-quality specifications in line with international standards and which provide an adequate health environment. His Royal Highness referred the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure with the task of moving the bachelor's housing to alternative areas. His Royal Highness followed up on the completion of citizens' needs for housing services, as well as projects that serve villages, such as the village of Hillet Abdus Saleh and neighboring villages. He also directed the Ministry of Housing to accelerate the process of a Ramli housing project. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also directed to take into account both the interests of fishermen and the requirements of wildlife conservation when determining the shrimp fishing areas and tie-in control over fishing using unsuitable nets and has directed the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure through coordination with competent authorities, including the Ministry of Interior, the Ministry of Works and Municipality Affairs and Urban Planning. He also directed to speed up the process of determining the rules and standards that define the state of disability that requires granting a paid two-hour rest daily, which it would rather whether it be an employee, worker with a disability, or caring for a disabled relative, which was stipulated by the Care and Rehabilitation and Operation of the Disabled Law in preparation for issuing a decision from the concerned minister and the corresponding ministry. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to continue developing the public road network in order to alleviate traffic congestion and also directed to speed up the work on the second phase of the expansion of a number of roads. The Cabinet referred to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs a memorandum of understanding between the University of Bahrain and the Embassy of the Republic of Korea that also contained a memorandum by the Minister of Education. The Cabinet discussed a draft law on the abolition of Article 353 of the Penal Code and has decided to return it to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs for further study. The Cabinet approved four proposals. The first concerned a comprehensive study regarding civil defense department centers, the second on the fixture of housing installments, the third on the allocation of units of housing projects for people with disabilities, and the fourth concerning the Sanabas Primary School for Girls. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Rafah Palace His Highness Royal Guard Commander Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Royal Guard Special Forces Commander Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, First Lieutenant Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in the presence of the Bahrain Defense Force Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa where His Highness Sheikh Nasser presented the commandment of the Royal Academy Sandhurst RMAS Major General Paul Nansen and a number of officers participating in the Sandhurst Academy Graduates Gathering Ceremony. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince highlighted the role of the Academy in training officers and providing them with the latest modern military knowledge, methods and science. He also hailed the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and the concerned authorities in organizing RMAS graduates gathering in Bahrain, adding that such gatherings reinforce the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the UK. The Crown Prince welcomed the participants, wishing them further success and progress. For his part, His Highness Sheikh Nasser expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his patronage of the RMAS ceremony organized by the BDF and for his interest in this gathering, which reflects the solid relations of cooperation between the Kingdom and the Academy.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Rafah Palace today the Chief Executive Officer of ENI, Claudio Descalzi. During the meeting, His Royal Highness and Mr. Descalzi explored ways to further enhance Bahrain's energy sector. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to develop the sector through innovative approaches and investments in research and development in an effort to maintain its competitiveness and support the Kingdom's economic development. His Royal Highness then underscored the Kingdom's strong cooperation with global companies across various industrial sectors. Turning to Bahrain-Italy ties, His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of continuing to expand economic cooperation, particularly in the oil and gas sector. His Royal Highness and Mr. Descalzi then reviewed a number of areas of mutual interest relating to the latest developments within the energy sector. In response, Mr. Descalzi expresses gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa deputized the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, to attend a ceremony for the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst graduates from friendly countries. The ceremony was organized by Bahrain Defense Force and it was held at the Isa Royal Military College. The BDF Commander-in-Chief was received by His Highness Royal Guards Commander Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness Royal Guard Special Forces Commander Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Chief of Staff of the BDF Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Naimi. The Commander-in-Chief welcomed the com commandment of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst Major General Paul Nansen. He highlighted the role of the Academy in training officers and providing them with the latest modern military knowledge, methods and science adding that military academies and institutions of this caliber highly reinforce the planning and development of armed forces. He affirmed that the BDF focuses on developing human resources and refining their skills. He also added that military academies in the GCC and Arab countries produce cadets with the highest level of training, stressing that these academies prepare generations of leaders that are capable of taking over the tasks entrusted to them professionally. After that, His Highness Sheikh Nasser delivered a speech in which he welcomed the audience. He highlighted the historic role of the Academy in training high-quality leading cadets that become important leaders, such as His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who established the Bahrain Defense Force after his graduation from the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst. His Highness considered the gathering to be a forum for RMAS graduates adding that it will enhance the long-standing historic relations and cooperation between Bahrain and the UK. He also wished the audience a pleasant stay in the kingdom. التي ومنذ عهد تأسيسها عام 1802 ولأكثر من 200 عام مضت وهي تقوم بتخريج القيادات العسكرية الفذة على مستوى العالم ومنهم ملوك ورؤساء كانوا وما زالوا لبعض الدول ومن أولئك الخريجين هو والدي صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة القائد الأعلى للقوات المسلحة حفظ الله ومن الكلمات الخالدة لسيدي صاحب الجلالة الذي شرع في بناء قوة دفاع البحرين بعد تخرجه مباشرة وقال لقد كانت أكاديمية سانتيرز وكلية مونز الحربية الاختيار المثالي للحصول على التدريب العسكري الحديث الذي ساهم وبلا شك في صقل وتعزيز معارفنا كما أنه بقدر اعتزازي بأنني أحد خريجي هذه الكلية فهناك العديد من القيادات البحرينية التي تخرجت من هذه الأكاديمية ويفوق عددهم المئة وعشر خريجا وهذا ما يميز العلاقات التاريخية التي تربط مملكة البحرين بالمملكة المتحدة منذ القدم وعلى مر التاريخ ضيوفنا الكرام إن هذا الملتقى بقدر ما يمثله كمحطة للالتقاء واستعادة الذكريات لمراحل التدريب الأساسية لخريجي هذه الأكاديمية بحضور هذه النخب من كافة دول شرق الأوسط الضيوف الكرام آملا لكم الطيب الإقامة في بلدكم الثاني مملكة البحرين 
والاستمتاع بباقي الفقرات بهذه المناسبة وهذا الملتقى الذي يعزز روح التعاون بين بلداننا والمملكة المتحدة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The commandment of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, Major Paul Nansen, then delivered a speech, after which the audience exchanged souvenirs. The ceremony ended with an air display performed by the Royal Bahrain Air Force. His Highness the Commander of the Royal Guard, Brigadier Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the commandment of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst, Major General Paul Nansen, and a number of the Academy's graduates from Arab and friendly countries. The Royal Guard Special Forces Commander, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, was present. The Commander of the Royal Guard highlighted the role of the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst in training officers and providing them with the latest modern military knowledge, methods, and science. The Royal Guard Commander hosted a dinner banquet in honor of the Academy's graduates. A number of their Highnesses and Bahrain Defense Force officers, graduates of the Academy, also attended. The Council of Representative Chairman Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah affirmed that the Gulf Cooperation Council countries' security is the security of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. He also expressed his appreciation of Pakistan's stance towards the safety and security of Bahrain, its vision in fighting terrorism, and unifying positions towards rejecting outside interferences in countries' affairs. The head of Pakistan's National Society, MP Sardar Iyaz Sadiq, for his part, praised the depth of the historic relations between Bahrain and Pakistan and also stressed the importance of strengthening such relations in various fields amid the circumstances the region is going through and the unification of stances and visions for the purpose of strengthening cooperation. He also confirmed the support of Pakistan's national society to all that would upgrade parliamentary and diplomatic relations between the two friendly countries. The Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, communicated with one of the intermediate schools participating in the Digital Empowerment and Education Project via the project's electronic communication system enabled in the school amongst teachers, students, parents, other schools, and the Ministry of Education. The call included live communication with members of the administrative bodies of the schools that are in phases one and two of the project regarding the effectiveness of the project. The principals talked about their school's experiences whilst implementing the projects. For his part, the minister affirmed that His Majesty King Hamad's school of future, rather schools of the future project, succeeded in achieving all the goals proven by the United Nations Educational Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO's rating of Bahrain as a pioneering country in the field of electronic education. The Digital Empowerment and Education project was inaugurated last year in five intermediate schools. Due to its success, it was expanded to 12 schools this year. The minister pointed out that this project has become a key tool for developing educational methods in the kingdom through the integration of technology and education. Dr. Naim expressed thanks and appreciation to those involved in the project and for their efforts which have led to the success of this project. <laughs> 